<laughs> well, national service is coming to you. Your country needs you. Well, <laughs> oh dear, what a cynical attempt by the Tories to try and gain back some reform voters. But you see, even Richard Tice is a little bit concerned about this policy. He's belittled it. Like, oh, it's a stupid policy. Knowing full well that many of, the, of his supporters in the Reform Party would actually like this policy. But it feels a bit like another attack by the Tories on the young. They're always the ones getting punished. Always the ones who are having something taken away from them. Maybe because they're not natural Tory voters. You see, these Tories, they don't look into the future. No. Nope. They don't seem to understand that today's young is tomorrow's old. Well, maybe a few more years down the line, but you know what I mean. They should be winning the young over. They ain't got a clue what they're doing. This is a vote loser. What grandparent is going to want to vote for a party that is going to bring something in that will alienate their grandchildren? You're going to get some numpties out there, after all. I suppose we did get Brexit, didn't we? When the majority of the old are voting for it. So I suppose there is that possibility. Going against the benefits of, you know, the good of their children or grandchildren. But some older generation of the things are terrible, I dare. Especially the state of social care as it is at the moment. They might need those grandchildren to wipe their bums later on, you know, you don't know, do you? Blimey. Now, James Cleverly, he says there's a problem with our young. It's a lack of social cohesion, he says. <laughs> what a load of bollocks. Sorry, but it is. You mould your kids. They're not born one way or another. They might have a chemistry. That's not who they are. No. You mould them. An image, usually, of the parents or of some figure in their lives. For me, it'd be my grandfather. He was a fantastic man. He voted to go into the EU. Well, it wasn't the EU back then, but you know what I mean. <clears throat> but you see, you always, they, the Tories, always seem to want to blame the young for the problems of today. Oh, okay, um, the young, uh, ethnic minority groups, you know, the others, LGBTQ+, plus. I keep forgetting what it is, <laughs> I'm terrible with that, I'll tell you. <sighs> Blame the other. Everyone else's fault. It's the Tory way, you know. If you want social cohesion, we need to invest in our young. If that is even, you know, if, if you are going to try and use it as a, as a, um, reason for the problems of today, which is not. It's division. Division that's been created by the Tory Brexit. Mm. And the Tories in general always fighting one group of people against another. Look at Northern Ireland. Now, if you come to Northern Ireland, for instance, how is that going to work in Northern Ireland? You're, going to, you're not going to get the, uh, the Catholics, for instance, they're not going to sign up for it, are they? No! This is just going to create even more divide. Also, more hatred for tomorrow's voters, the youngsters. They're going to hate the Tories even more. It's so short-sighted, it's stupid. Now, I know what you're going to say. Austria, they have uh, conscription. And you're going to say, oh, Switzerland has conscription. I think it's uh, in the military in Austria, is it about nine months, is it? Eight or nine months? Uh, I think if you do um, like a civil service of some kind, you go into healthcare or something like that, it's about 12 months. But in the Switzerland, you go, I think it's 12 months, you go into the military, military training as part of your conscription, but then you get to take your gun home. You get to keep it. 
<laughs> they do check it though, but she didn't fire the bullets. So, but being prepared, you see. But their history is, is different to ours in the UK. So you can, understand, you can, you can kind of understand. And we had post-war conscriptions, uh, conscription, conscription, anyway. The times have changed, haven't they? We haven't got Russia on our doorstep. Although we are sort of uh, poke, poking the bear, aren't we? But we are. It could have been nipped in the bud over a year ago if we, well, I've got to help the Uru Ukrainians full on, not as we're doing at the moment, which is just like, you know, prolonging the war to probably what's going to be the same conclusion of Russia walking in there and taking Kiev. So yeah, maybe we should be funding our youth. That's what we should be doing. Not chucking them in some kind of you know, so-called a voluntary uh, military service or civil service of one kind or another. Now, the kids these days, you see, in university and what have you, how are they going to find the time? They're having to work all evenings and blooming weekends just so they can fund themselves for university. How's that going to work? If it is just one or two days a week for a year. It's not going to work, is it? You're going to have no time to yourself. And all they end up doing is peeling potatoes, probably, to feed the rest of the troops. There won't be any proper training there. No. It's just baloney. Yeah, they'll be peeling potatoes for the troops, they'll be and, and, and these youngsters will be eating gruel. <laughs> Basic slave labour, because they're, they're not going to get paid. Is that a way of plugging the gap in the you know, social services? And plugging the gap in the military? Is it potential cannon, for, cannon fodder? Lemons? Maybe. It makes me wonder. But this grand plan is going to cost two and a half billion pounds. That money could be better spent. If you want to invest in the young, invest in the schools. Instead of a, I don't know, <laughs> conscription, conscription, conscription as your manifesto pledge. Why don't we have education, education, education? I, I don't know what it is, but I've heard that somewhere before. <laughs> and they did invest in education, the last Labour government, big time. I was one of the benefits of it. My construction firm, we used to do work for them. Yeah, you know, for, you know, for other construction, you do subbing sub work uh, for caters and other uh, construction firms that had contracts. Like... Extensions on schools, getting rid of the mobiles and what have you. Building schools. Huge amount of work. A lot was done. You remember the old mobiles, don't you? With the old tyrolean finish on the outside. Boiling hot in the summer, freezing cold in the winter. Got rid of them all. Got rid of the outside toilet blocks. Made perfect sense. I said you're supposed to invest the money, the people's money. Now I've got a feeling that this is like, other than it being some kind of ploy by the Tories, think they're going to win over their base, win back some more votes. I actually think it's a forced military service through the back door. That's the risk. You'd already have the system in place, wouldn't you? To make that a reality. So yeah, but you know, take away their ability to love work and travel across the EU, 27 member states. Well, actually, the whole of the Schengen, actually. Instead, you want to blame him again for the problems in the country, and then make them do you know, some sort of forced labour, slave labour. Whether it be in the military or whether it be in the hospitals, maybe, I don't know. Nursing homes. 
dredging. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, I have this right. Because I don't think James Cleverly has an eye, has a, an inkling of what this actual policy is. I was listening to him on the LBC Radio's Warm interviewed by Lewis Goodall, and it was like he was winging it. He, he, he didn't have a clue. He's making it up as he's going along. And I just pulled this one out of the bag. Richie Sunak has never, ever mentioned this before. Never. And that's the man who goes on, now going on about social curation. Yeah. Yeah, get rid of the divide and all of that. And now the, the, uh, what's that, the levelling up completely utterly broke down. Michael Gove has done a runner. You know, the man's supposed to uh, make it happen. And Richie Sunak, so, social cohesion and all that, and levelling up, he's going to take the money from the poor and give it to his rich Richmond constituency. These people, crikey, they must think we're idiots. They really must think we're idiots. How are they going to enforce it? They say it's going to be mandatory. So what are they going to do? Are they going to uh, criminalise it? No, James Clever Cleverly said, no, we won't criminalise it. But you know what they're going to do, don't they? A bit like uh, if kids don't go to school, your parents get fined. That's what's going to happen. There'll be fines placed upon either the individual Probably the parents, actually, under 25, you see. That's what I reckon. Parents get fined. The other thing what this could do, this could, you know, kids in fair, because they really do not want to do it, you might drive some onto the streets. And that would be very sad. It's just unworkable, isn't it? It's really unworkable in the UK. So there's, there's so many reasons why this is a bad idea. But let's say, for instance, right? Yeah, you know, you've been in school, college, whatever, until you're 18 years old. And maybe you're going to go into university or go into work. Yes, there's a large portion of proportion of the 18-year-olds uh, they go to work, don't they? All you're going to be doing is remove more people from the workforce. I know they're saying it's part-time and stuff, but there's no way somebody could work five days a week and then they have to do full-on military service on the weekends. What? Crikey. All the things that would have actually given us like social cohesion, like they're talking about at the moment. You know, like the cadets, like the scouts, all those, all these institutions. They're falling to the way, so they ain't got the funding. Youth centres. They always seem to have to be voluntary controlled. And now they're impossible to run because of legislation imposed upon these youth centres. They made it absolutely impossible with the insurances that have gone through the flipping roof. <sighs> Rentals of these um, village halls and what have you. And quite often, this <sighs> village hall committees absolutely hate youth centres because you do get problematic kids. There's only usually one or two of them are a problem, maybe a few other followers. Most cases, youth centres are just kids getting together, maybe playing, I don't know, shooting some pool and what have you. Drawing, painting, playing games, maybe some sport. I, I just. What the hell has the country come to? Really? I'm not saying that um, conscription is necessarily a bad idea. What I'm saying is it's not workable in the UK. We are not well placed. We cannot, we can't even manage to um, get the basics right. Social care, for instance, are, you know, case in point. Can't look after the old ones once they start getting frail. We can't get people through the hospitals. They're waiting in the ambulances because the bed blockers, for instance, I hate that term. Pretty much what they are, though. It's not their fault, though, is it? It's because there's no social care. I actually think this is going to be a vote loser. I really do. I don't think anyone in their right mind would want to see this introduced into the United Kingdom. I know that the country's in a real volatile place at the moment, but we're a part of the United Nations. 
and NATO. As soon as you get NATO involved, our military is huge. Absolutely huge. And it's like the Musketeers, isn't you know? All for, uh, one all for all, or whatever it is. One for all. I don't know. How's it go? <laughs> have I got already? So that's kind of how I feel about it. I just think it's unworkable. And I think it's um, rather stupid. And I think we should be um, funding our children for the futures. For the future, for their future, which actually becomes everybody's future. Because at the end of the day, it's the youngsters that are funding social care. They're the ones who usually end up being higher taxpayers. They are. It's not the old. It's not people with pensions, is it? No. If they've got savings, they might be paying a small amount of interest on their savings. If they sell a house, yes, they might have to pay a bit of a interest on that, you know, capital gains and all that. Hmm. But it's the youngsters, isn't it? All this is going to do is make us more dependent on imported labour, immigration, which is something that they also want to get rid of. <laughs> and then you got Richard Tice saying, hey, you get it down to zero. Only let the people in as you in out policy, only let the people in as we need them. And then they've got to conform to our ways or else. Oh, yeah, but and he also wants the people in the little boats to drown. Well, he didn't say Ben Heap was wrong, did he? When he said that. Oh, just, just absolute madness. So, patriotism, forced patriotism. Let me say it now. Lose my voice already. Oh, it's just nuts. Vote Tory. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> On your bike. <laughs> anyway, if you kind of been done, put your like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and maybe, uh, well, a little bell icon, because then you get one buzz feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. This is just madness, isn't it? Don't forget we're live tonight at 8.30 uh, p.m. Sunday night, that is, in case you're watching this tomorrow, or the next day, maybe. You know, but this is just crazy. Conscription, eh? Slave labour, that's what it is. Too late. Oh, I can't reach the camera. Oh, oh there it is, it's better. Oh yeah, I forgot. By the way, we're doing rewilding here in France where we're planting a thousand trees on two acres of land. And if you want to be a part of that, there's a GoFundMe link down below, that there is. Where we'll plant a tree on your behalf, but also uh, put a sign with the tree. You, can't, you, know, you can see the trees. I see the ones down the valley, but there's ones over there as well. I think you can probably see those ones. Yeah, the 550 so far. I get in there. Anyway, toodaloo.